hello what is going on youtubers um so in this filming session i uh, would like to wrap up um you know some unfinished b business i left um you know in you know in in my earlier filming session um well um so Welcome to the MGTOW book club s series of my uh, uh, videos. Um, so in this video, I would like yes, like I said, let's let um, let's resume um, reading and reviewing the book called Lessons from a Hundred Thousand Cold Calls. Um, Previously, I um, I stopped at um, you know nearly uh, sixty percent or sixty five percent completion of you know the chapter you know chapter twenty six harm um, harmonic um, har um, harmonic conversation. Um, So yeah, without further ado, let us begin. Pronunciation sounded out. Decision makers are not impressed when you mispronounce their names, company names, technical terms, or any other words that they consider important. To avoid mispronouncing the name of an individual, call the company and ask the receptionist to pronounce it for you. Write it down um, write it down phonetically as she slash he says it next repeat the name um, repeat the name over and over to yourself until it falls effortlessly from your lips then call back ask the receptionist for the individual by name as a, a as a dress rehearsal and then um, a, um, and then address the person correctly when he or she answers the decision, um, the decision maker will appreciate it. Well, yeah, I do confess that um, every now and then I do tend to struggle memorizing um, people's names. You know, <laughs> names of uh, you know a variety of languages, even including Mandarin Chinese and Ch Ch Japanese. And uh, uh, but 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 um, but still, you know, I tend to kind of uh, y y you know um, you know lose track of p people's names. You know, whenever I you know w whenever I call the bank, you know, in particular, whenever I call um, ANZ or you know or um, you know or. Westpac or blah blah blah, you know, for assistance um, w with my account or what um, not. Not 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 sure if it has something to do with my ear wax or you know, it's because you know they just you know, <laughs> um, you know they kind of you know. Um, D deliberately, you know, s you know, said or, you know, or pronounced their names, you know, so so vaguely. I don't know. Um, yeah, but still, yeah. Let's proceed. Variations. Watch that accent. Y yeah. Or um, watch that accent. Yeah, will <laughs> or you will. Well, yeah. I'm told that I have a southern accent. I don't hear it, but I do notice that folks in other parts of the country talk funny. I like my accent. I think it sounds friendly and laid back, likable qual um, qualities in a sales person. However, I am careful to avoid sounding like a good only boy or a country hick. Unless, of course, I'm selling to those folks. Most business people, both in and out of the South, think that too much of a southern accent implies that the speaker is stupid. I prefer to avoid that um, 
Mon, I prefer to avoid that Monik. I don't know how to say this. <laughs> Monica, yeah, it's Monica. A name, Mo Mo Monica. A name. His real Monica is David Kennedy. Yeah, Monica or Monica in American accent. Yeah, I prefer to avoid that Monica. Accents have limitations. Too much Yankee. Too much Yankee um, sounds harsh and unfriendly. Too much tech. Too much Texas cowboy sounds unprofessional. Yeah. So, <laughs> so if um, if you say it like you know Monica, that you know that might sound a bit too you know cowboy probably <laughs> or Monica, you know. Yeah, I don't know. Since I since I I've been neither to the states or to Great Britain myself, it's hard to you know to taste the, the vibe. You know, well, it's you know hard for me you know to you know to talk uh, uh, about you know those two kinds of vibes. I haven't. E experienced myself firsthand, so <laughs> yeah. Um, resuming, um, customer service operators in India speak English, but many have such a strong Indian accent that I can't understand them. <laughs> Likewise, man, like it or not, standard English is the standard English is the language of business. While decision makers will tolerate a moderate degree of regional or foreign accent by a telemarketer, they will reject a caller who sounds radically different from their perception of proper speech, which is usually defined as the way people sound on television. VIPs are most um, VIPs are most impressed by callers who have the same accents as they do. So yeah, very much likely. I um, my accent still sounds like a chink. Still sounds like a China man. <laughs> Since you know, um, on many uh, on many occasions, you know, I still tend to hear, um, you know, the leads or the bunches of you know potential clients. You know, say to me. That that you know, are you calling from overseas? Are you c c calling from from China or from f from Malaysia or from even from um, South K K Korea? <laughs> blah blah blah. So yeah, I uh, yeah, that's quite um awkward and uh, demoralizing. Yeah. That means you know I have I just have to keep practicing yeah. Practice makes perfect yeah. Let's resume. So warmth, spread the sunshine, you know, or the positive vibe. Business can be cold and unforgiving. Dog eat dog eat dog. <laughs> Take no prisoners. Struggle for the almighty dollar. Whether um, whether they realize um, whether they they realize it or not, decision makers need human warmth. A ray of summer sun on an otherwise on an otherwise um, dreary. dreary winter day, dreary winter day, offering that warmth in your phone conversation is both a good deed and and an effective selling tool. Think of the buyer as a friend with a problem. One day you discover that um, you have the solution to that problem. So you call your friend on the phone, excited and happy that you can ease the burden. You look forward to hearing you, you look forward to hearing the person's voice because you know um 
because you know he will welcome that. Um, because you know um, he will welcome what you have to say. You feel good about yourself because you are helping. Your voice, your voice, um, ex, um, execute, ex, ex. Exudes, exude, ex, um, e, x, u, d, e. Exude, exude. It means with with reference to moisture, with re reference to moisture or smell, discharge or be discharged slowly and steadily. With object, the beetle ex exude and cause tick liquid. Uh, with object of a person display an emotion or quality strongly and openly. Sir Thomas ex exuded goodwill of a place having a strong a atmosphere of the building exudes an air of tranquility. Um, exude. Well, I never heard of this word before. Yeah, th that's a new vocab for, for me. Yeah. So, yeah. That adds one more reason I should keep you know, um, narrating and reviewing more and more books. <laughs> you know, your voice exudes genuine concern. The warmth is obvious in your tone. You make a connection with your friend that brightens his day and yours. The point about warmth is that you can't fake it. If you don't believe that you that you are helping the buyer, you won't sound warm. If you don't believe it, if you don't believe in yourself, you won't sound warm. If you hate your job, your product, or your life in general, you certainly won't sound warm. Only through a positive passion about life and its possibilities can you bring a ray of sunshine into the buyer's otherwise cold world. A, a cheerful, positive tone can melt the ice in telemarketing. Decision makers feel more comfortable with happy people than sad ones. Don't try to be the slap on the back used car sales salesman, um, gushing with an ear to ear gr grin, with an ear to ear grin. <clears throat> grin not grin, 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 grin not grim, grin, 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 yeah, grin. Um, smile broadly. Grin, grimming, grimming cheerfully. Yeah, it means smile. Um, smile. Yeah, smile. Bo smile. Smile boldly, especially in an unrestrained manner and with the mouth open. Yeah. Um. Grin. Geni wa hao mukidashi ni su hito nado ga. How misset Valau Nico Nicoli Nicoli Sulu. I see. So, um, so I'm just feeling my feeling some numbness on my right foot. Um, close the door a little bit, shut the door about. Yeah. It so yeah, so that you know, my laptop computer or you know or the app you know that runs you know in the in the background in my laptop computer won't be able to 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 eavesdrop. <laughs> yeah. Um. Still, yeah. Um. Where were we? The point about warmth, it, the point about warmth is that you can't fake it. If you don't believe that you that you are helping the buyer, you won't sound warm. If you don't believe in yourself, you won't sound warm. If you hate your job, your product, or your life in general, you certainly won't sound warm. Only through a positive passion about life and its possibilities can you bring a ray of sunshine into the buyer's otherwise cold world. A cheerful. Positive tone can melt the ice in telemarketing. Decision makers feel more comfortable with happy people than sad ones. 
Don't try to be the slap on the back used car salesman gushing with an ear to ear grin. That's hockey and irritating. Don't um, don't tell a joke unless you are really good at it. And the joke is generic enough and clean enough to be funny to most people. If the if the contact person asks how you are, don't say something extreme such as if I felt if if I felt any better, I wouldn't know what to do with myself. <laughs> One um one way to express cheerfulness on a subtle level is to raise the pitch of your voice at the end of a sentence while saying a supportive word. For example, if the if the VIP asks you um, if you can do um, X Y Z and you and you can I'll answer sure or absolutely. With a raising, um, with a rising pitch. The key is sincerity. Um, if you feel particularly depressed at a given, if you feel particularly depressed at a given time, make calls another day. Yeah. So perhaps you know it's you know it's not appropriate you know to make cold calls you know when you know while you know extreme you know extremely. At, you know, if not more than, you know, um, mildly, you know, um, depressed, sad, or demoralized, and, and yet, you know, I, I tend to, to, you know, to do, you know, I tend to, to do, you know, exactly, you know, almost exactly, you know, what the author of such book, you know, tells me not to, <laughs> you know, that's, you know, largely b because, you know, I just, you know, feel so, you know, excuse me, I'm current, you know, that's, that's just, you know, largely b because, you know, I, I got myself so stranded in, uh, you know, in, uh, Desperate and uh, you know, lonely, shitty situation. Um, you know, and you know, as a man, you know, as a guy, you know, as a dude, you know, you 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 certainly don't want to be, you know, in you know in my in my shoes, you know. <laughs> so and, and the you know and. People, you know, they they can, you know, they they can sense, you know, the vibe, you know, more often than not, you know, whenever you got yourself stranded in a in a desperate shite hole, and you know, um, you know, somehow, you know, your tone, you know, begins to automatically, you know, change, you know, you know, and 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 more often than not, you know. People will, you know, will most likely, you know, take notice, you know, slash perceive such change in your tone, you know, or maybe, you know, a switch, you know, a switch or and, you know, and um abrupt change in tones, in the vibes, you know, you um you um you emit or radiate, you know, to or you know or project to them so um so yeah you know so um don't you know don't show you know don't um you know so the the lessons you know i have learned so far you know you know while you know while you know um you know consider my own you know my own affairs and and the uh, matters of child, you know, in you know, in um, in combination with what I have read and uh, what I managed to salvage so far from, you know, from this book, you know, is that you know, um, don't, um, and 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 this this um, you know, in particular, you know, uh, um, uh, applies to us men. You know, don't um, don't 
present your you know your um your weaknesses or your vulnerabilities you know to um to to others you know even you know even to um even to other men um um you know i have made you know such you know i have fought you know i've 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 fallen victim you know to such ditch you know to such pit you know you know for a number of times you know and uh, even most recently you know when you know whenever you know you know when 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 i ask you know when i saw you know you know you know um you know um allegedly you know and you know a gesture or an act you know a comment you know out of uh kindness or sympathy or sense or sympathy you know from one of my you know ex my ex patrons you know offering to you know excuse me offering to help with my you know or our companies you know um 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 <laughs> offering to help with our company's director ID crisis you know I I'm almost you know immediately you know uh pledged you know up uh, uh, you know um you know uh, uh pleaded in in front of him you know on on discord <laughs> and uh, you know I you know I reviewed you know my 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 vulnerabilities to him in such a, a, a stupid and highly naive fashion and uh, I'll, um, I'll ultimately you know he you know he um, he, he he turned me down and you know you know and he uh, changed of mind you know he changed his mind you know after you know he learned that it involved some kind of risks though i though i pro though i i promised him i won't you know you know i i won't you know um use you know his you know his um per personal info whatsoever you know you know while i fa while filled in such an application form you know to you know to apply you know to apply for an extension you know of uh, you know of of non applying for a, a, a director ID you know as a company you know as a company director of an Australian um, you know and Australian you know pro, um, proprietary limited company. So yeah, that's one of the lessons, you know, harsh l lessons I've learned so far. Um, <clears throat> nevertheless, let's proceed with the reading and reviewing, re reviewing this book. So, um, if you feel if you feel particularly depressed at a given time. If you feel particularly depressed at a given at a given time, make calls another day. Ionically, making multiple cold calls can be a can be a depressing experience. <laughs> Ionically, making multiple cold calls can be a, a, de a depressing experience, <laughs> especially when no one seems interested in what you are selling. The more calls you make without success. The more angry and desperate you are likely to feel, which is exactly the opposite attitude you need in order to sell or fish successfully. You must believe that the next call or the next cast is going to hook the big one. It's going to hook the big one. It's it's like flipping coins. No matter how many tails you get in a row, there is still um there's there's still a fifty fifty chance that you will get heads on the next flip in fact if you um if you let your logical mind wander a bit you can come to believe 
that after multiple failures, the odds are in your favor. Um, true, yeah, you know, well, um, statistically, statist statistically, and uh, math mathematically speaking, you know, yes, you know, you know, the um, the more ac actions we take, you know, the more a actions we take. You know the the um, the luckier we we tend to get. You know, you know, you know, in a highly, you know, uh, you know, in a highly similar or you know, uh, or you know, uh, you know, an uh, an um, um, analogous manner, you know, to flipping coins, you know, yeah. But you know, I suppose you know the you know the author here might have overlooked you know another you know another somewhat um, trivial fact you know you know um, there are still some chance you know that that, that you know uh, you know probably you know one one in one in a million or, or one in a or one in ten thousand chance that you know the coin might um, just you know um, stand there you know just uh, stand there you know you know on you know on its edge you know um, while, while you know when we uh, flip you know when we flip it well still you know it, yes it's it seems still quite um, you know, negligible. You know, in comparison, you know, to you know, to um, to to um, to yielding, you know, a head or a, a tail. You know, you know, flips after flips. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, let's resume. <laughs> with this kind of harmless, with 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 this kind of. With this kind of harmless delusion, with this kind of harmless delusion, you can convince yourself to be cheerful with every call. After all, you are going to sell something, guaranteed. It's just a matter of time. Okay, so... Um, Um, so it still, you know, sounds to me pretty much like like a mind game, you know, like a, you know, somewhat similar, you know, to, you know, to StarCraft, you know, to to playing StarCraft two or StarCraft, you know, one, you know, one one was. One versus one, or Warcraft three, one versus one, or or any other sorts of uh, e um e e sport games, you know. So the more um the more it it seems to it seems to me that that you know the more you rush to get something done, you know the you know the less li likely you will you will you know you will get you know you will be become you know you know to make m m mistakes to make you know in particular some stupid <laughs> some stupid and you know slash low level m m mistakes um and, and then you know you know um um consequently you know the less likely you will be able to you know, to to achieve the goal. So yeah. So just you know, we just have to learn to handle tilting. You know, whether we like it or not. You know, you know, and uh, you know, yes, as men, you know, this this is you know, um, as far as I can perceive and imagine. You know. You know, more important, you know, than anything else. You know, um, in you know, in terms of uh, goal setting, you know, in terms of uh, you know, personal um, development, you know, and in terms of you know, um, 
you know, in, in terms of, you know, re, um, retaining clients or patrons, you know, since, since I perceive that, that I have, you know, I have been, since I perceive that I have been simping after my patrons, you know, and my, my, my viewers and pro pro probably also my, my subscribers that, that says, you guys wait too much so so yes so from now on i i shall you know i shall try my best to 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 minimize simping even after you guys so uh well if, if that makes you feel un uh, uncomfortable or frustrated or you know, or violated, or blah blah blah, or humiliated. Feel feel free to un un unsubscribe. S since, you know, I, you know, I I, I just you know, I, I I just could care less. <laughs> at at least at th 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 at, at least at th this point. Since you know, considering I have already lost three patrons. You know, in a single month, so yeah, it's you know. Um, ne never mind. Yeah, let's wrap this chapter up. Energy, turn it on. Nothing happens without energy. The more, um, the most wonderful machine is just a a hunk of junk until it's plugged in. Yeah. The most wonderful machine is just a hunk of junk until until, <coughs> until it's plugged in. The mo um, the most inspirational ideas are just words until someone decides to act on them. Your product is just another distraction until the buyer gets excited about it. Like mo um, like moths, human beings are drawn to the flame of inspiration and passion. They are waiting for someone to turn on the light and show them a better, happier, brighter way. Sound energetic on every call. Focus on, um, focus your passion and exhibit your intensity without overwhelming the customer. Don't rely on, uh, how, how do you pronounce this? Grandiose. Grandi grandiose. Yeah. Extravagantly or pretentiously imposing in appearance or style. The court's grand, grandiose facade, um, conceived on a very grand or an ambitious scale, grandiose plans to, ref, to reform the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Grandiose, grandiose, grandiose. Grandiose, so yeah new vocabulary new english vocabulary uh, um acquired or spotted yeah at least spotted <laughs> don't rely on grandiose phrases and a loud voice to convey your energy remember lighting um remember lightning may be electricity but it's too dangerous to handle um edison didn't invent electricity he found a way to make it useful the energy in your call reflects more than your enthusiasm for your product or service. It reflects your attitude toward life. Are you excited to be alive? Are you happy about who you are? Are you hopeful about the future? Selling is more than a well-rehearsed act. It's a reflection of who you are. Imagine you are a prophet filled with spiritual energy. You speak in a calm yet powerful voice. Your words are simple, yet your intensity is undeniable. Your voice is a vibrant musical instrument, profoundly touching each other, the profoundly touching each listener. You teach and inspire, you lead, you serve, you sell. For every sale you miss because you are too enthusiastic, you will miss a hundred because you are not enthusiastic enough. By Zig Zegler. So yeah, this uh, concludes the chapter, you know, chapter 20, chapter 24, yeah, <laughs> harmonic conversations. So, yeah, so, 
Shall we pr proceed with? Um, yes. Um, just uh, please allow me to remoisturize my throat and tongue a little bit. So, uh, in fact, I I did I didn't um, plan, you know, to you know to read which chapter uh, after chapter twenty four harmonic conversation of this book. Maybe um, part ten. What to say? Winning words. The sweetest sound. Being polite. Sub sub subliminal. Um sub mil sub subliminal. Yes. Too much of a good thing. Um, you had it me at hello chapter th chapter thirty. Um, yeah, chapter fifteen. Ch chapter chapter thirty one. So which chapter? Um, interference. Cheat sheets. Back up. The semi ex. Yeah. Let's read uh, parts. Let's read and review cha uh, part seven. Know your stuff, chapter twenty-one. The semi-expert. Yeah. Let's see how far I can go. Yeah. Um, chapter twenty-one. The semi-expert. Every time, every um, every time I talk, every time I talk with a client about hiring me for telemarketing, the same question arises. What do you know about the product or service we're selling? My answer is always the same. Not much, but I'm a fast learner. I explain the obvious. If you know a product expert who is also a telemarketing expert, um, you need to hire that person. Of course, I know they. I I know they wouldn't be in interviewing me if they had already found Mr. Wonderful. If not, you have two choices. I continue matter of factly. I continue matter of factly. You can hire a product expert and teach him to be a telemarketing expert, or you can hire a telemarketing expert and teach him the product information. After a sufficient pause, I close by adding. I think you. I, I think you. Um, you'll find that it will be much easier to teach me about your product than to teach a product expert what I know about telemarketing. <laughs> yeah, I think you will find it that it will be much easier to teach me about your product than to teach a product expert what I know about telemarketing. <laughs> inevitably, inevitably, they agree. And also, I start every assignment knowing little or nothing about the product slash service I'm selling. In some ways, this is an advantage. I can see the the merchandise with a um, with a clear, fresh perspective. Uh, just let me uh, excuse me. Let me uh, write that down. Grandiose. New vocab I just spotted. Okay, yeah, let's resume. Um, I, I can see the merchandise with a clear, fresh perspective. I can I can more easily discern the most important features and benefits without being, um, without being, um, inundated, 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 overwhelmed to overwhelm someone with things or people to be dealt with. We have been in inundate, inundated with complaints from listeners. Flood. Okay, it's a verb. Yeah, inundated. I can more easily discern the most. Um, I can more easily discern the most important features and benefits without being inundated with peripheral details. I can see the product as potential buyers see it, stripped of its glitter, standing alone without position papers and technical manuals. Simple in view. Ready to serve. I can more easily discern the most important features and benefits without being inundated with peripheral details. I can see the product as potential buyers see it, 
stripped of its glitter standing alone without position papers and technical manuals, simple and new, ready to serve. Yes, I suppose uh, this chapter sounds a bit vague to me, you know. So far, you know, the you know the author here, you know, just talk talks about a bunch of a bunch of you know mumbo jungles, you know, blended with some you know some 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 highly gibberish data without you know without referring to practical or any empirical examples or case studies <laughs> yeah i don't know but yeah it's kind of um, you know making me quite confused <laughs> but still let's proceed N nevertheless yeah well <sighs> While my product ignorance is often ignored during the interview, it's no excuse after I start making calls. Those I call may be impressed with my style, but they also want substance. Selling the sizzle without the stick, of, without the steak can only take you so far. I will have to uh, Google or check some other books or dictionaries, you know, to find out what selling the, si selling the sizzle without this, the steak <laughs> means. <clears throat> yeah, but yeah, let's do so later. And so, my first task on a new job is to cram myself full of facts and figures about the product's uh, features. Um, Um, and so, my first task on the new job is to cram myself full of facts and figures about the product's features, benefits, competitive advantage, and, um, and all the other important details. Even so, I remember that I'm... Even so, I remember that I'm never going... Even so, I remember that I'm never going to know as much about the product I'm selling as the people who designed it or who service it. And they are and they're never going to know as much about selling it over the phone as I do. What's important is that I know the most important facts. The information that will satisfy 95% of all of the people I call. If you classify, if you classify all product information on a, on a, on, on, on a um, 1 to 10 scale with 10 being every fact known 75% of all telemarketing calls require product knowledge on a level 3 which is basically what the item does and how it will help <clears throat> which is basically what the item does and how it will help summarized in a few sentences another 20% involving questions and objections Require level 6 to 7 knowledge. The remaining 5% require expertise beyond my capacity and, and necessitate help from more knowledgeable members of my team. Therefore, before you can represent your product adequately, you need to, you need to separate the information needed in... in, um, in, um, in in 95% um, of your calls from the other 5%. Um, the more experience you have in telemarketing, the easier this task will be. Unfortunately, you can't rely on other staff members to help you in this quest. Technical experts are so flooded with facts that they can really separate which are important fellow sellers who use the dump every fact you know on the poor unsuspecting customer strategy won't be of any help either rely on your own best judgment to determine information priorities then test your theory in the in the marketplace if multiple prospects ask for facts that aren't part of your regular 
um, repro, repro, repertoire. repertoire. That's a French word. Repertoire. Rep repertoire. Repertoire. Yeah, it's from French. Repertoire. Why is this book so full of French and jargons? I don't know, man. <laughs> that makes my life a bit more difficult. Okay, let's wrap this up. Uh, we can call it a day or a night. Oh, this chapter is not as short as I expected either. Perhaps it's due to the fact that I haven't been reading much books recently a anyway. So, um, Rely on your own best judgment to determine information priorities. Then test your theory in the marketplace. If multiple prospects ask for facts that aren't part of your rec regular repertoire, Add what you are missing. Repertoire. 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 Yeah, repertoire. Repertoire. Add what you are missing. Um, if multiple prospects ask for facts that aren't part of your regular repertoire and what you are missing. If some of your information gains no traction with most callers, drop it. Gradually, you, um, you, um, you'll determine what potential buyers want to hear. And, um, <clears throat> and uh, what you do, repeat what you've learned again and again. So it's, uh, you know, in, in in other words, I suppose the author here refers to iteration or e or um or it um it e um iterative um a actions or whatnot. Let me check how to pronounce. This. Iterative. Yeah, iterative. It iterative, not it um not iterative. Iterative, yeah. Iteration, yeah. It's it's basically uh, I I suppose mean means you know ma making yourself kind of uh, me um, me mechanical, um, you know um, you know while performing such actions. But you know uh, yet you know on the other hand in you know in, in the meantime you know um, remember to you know. Um, you know, document, you know, the outcomes and, uh, you know, save them to use later, you know, in order, you know, in, in order, you know, to improve your chances next time. Yeah. That's what I reckon and imagine. Yeah. Um, in the end, you'll, you'll sound like an expert without being too bogged down in the in the obscure, in the uh, in the obs in the obscure facts and figures. Obscure, yeah. Obscure. Yeah, obscure. Uh, let's hear what si what Siri has to say about this. In the end, you'll sound like an expert without being too bogged down in obscure facts and figures. In the end, you will sound like an expert without being too bogged down in the obs obscure facts and figures. Yeah. Um, oops, just let me remove this bookmark, you idiot. Okay, stupid machine. Um, features, know what it does and how it does it. Start by looking at the product's features. What does it do? How does it, how does, um, how does it do it? Is it a product, a service or both? How would you describe it in simple one to three terms? I worked briefly for a local software company selling a product that I could never really comprehend. The company describe um, the company the company describes its product its product as a business pr a business process management solution to a company's business needs beginning with business 
goals alignment with an eye towards creating business value through process change. <laughs> Do you want that with fries? I'm sure some people. I'm sure some people understand what they are selling. I'm just not one of them. <laughs> I'm I'm just not one of them. Needless to say, I've got I got fired when they learned that I didn't understand and frankly didn't want to understand what they were talking about. <laughs> Yeah, that's a bunch of uh, j uh, gibberish mumbo jumbos, you know. And uh, un you know, unfortunately, you know, if um, if we wish to succeed in 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 making cold calls, um, you know, and you know, probably you know, c c um, close a couple of deals over the phone via cold cold calls, you know, we just have to we just have to learn to deal with it and cope with it you know um but i'm not i've i've no i i have um utterly you know no experience of getting my 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 sorry and crippled and highly and severely de de depressed us hired by any you know large um corporations as a telemarketer or co Code call caller anyway. So I, I, I so at at at, uh, at th this point, I I can I can merely comment and uh, you know and uh, speculate <laughs> on you know what the author here um, is trying to present to us. You know as spect you know as spectators slash by bystanders. You know, bystanders, yeah. Um, fuzzy sounding products have their place in the big world, but they don't lend themselves well to telemarketing. As discussed earlier, the telemarketer only has a few seconds to convey the most important information. It would take me an hour to explain all that mumbo jumbo. <laughs> Here comes the word mumbo jumbo. Long before then, I'd li I'd be um I'd be I'd be listening to the to the phone click off um, on the other end. Identify the three most important features of your pod, of your product, then describe each in straightforward common sense terms using active verbs and short sentences. No one can um, quote no one can remember more than three points. End quote. Unquote, um, no one can remember more than three points. Quote, quote unquote. <laughs> By Philip um, Cros 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 Crosby, Philip Crosby. Uh, let's hear what Siri has to say uh, about this guy. Philip Crosby. Philip Crosby. Yeah. Who is this guy anyway? Philip, uh, according to Wikipedia, Philip B. Crosby. Uh, was a businessman and author who contributed to management theory and quality management practices. Crosby initiated the Zero Defect, Defects program at the Martin Company as the quality control manager of the blah 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 blah. <laughs> Let's shelf, shelf it for later, yeah. Um, Benefits. Explain why it's important. As discussed earlier, a dancing refrigerator may be a marvelous invention, but why would anyone buy one? Knowing the features of your product is important. Understanding its benefits is essential. What needs does this product fulfill? What problems does it solve? Will the buyer be richer, safer, or happier as a result? as a result of, uh, of having this invention. Many people confuse features and benefits. Perhaps they assume that because a product does X, Y, Z, a buyer will immediately recognize the value of having it. For example, I'm always skeptical. I'm all, for, for example, I'm always skeptical of bells and whistles added to new software versions, particularly when I'm perfectly happy with the old model. Things that are working perfectly well because um things that are working perfectly well become so 
new and improved that I can't use them anymore. Look on the help index of most software programs and you will see a, a, a myriad, 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 yeah, and you will see a myriad of features. Um, you will see a myriad of features um, that you will never use. Excuse me. Unfortunately, some product developers believe in the. Unfortunately, some product. Unfortunately, some product developers um, believe in the build it and they will come theory, assuming that new things are inherently beneficial. The dot com bust illustrated how expensive this kind of thinking can be. A, co a complex, um, a complex product or service may offer a variety of benefits. Identify the most important ones. For example, if you are selling a a, a, a fuel that cures, uh, if you, beg your pardon. For example, if you are selling a pill that cures cancer, the product has two benefits. It saves your life. Um, number one, it saves your life, and number two, it's convenient to take. Obviously, one benefit is a great deal more important than the other. The other consideration in prioritizing benefits is the uh, is the um, uh, opinion of the decision maker. What is important to the receptionist may not be important to the CEO. Once you once you have identified the primary the, the primary benefits, formulate a sentence that will describe it clearly. Use simple and direct words that the listener will immediately understand. Forget the jargon and the business speak. If your product will increase company revenue, say so in just those words. Explaining benefits is like explaining jokes. If the listener doesn't get it immediately, explaining the punchline won't help. Okay, let's hear what Siri has to say about this. Um, about this sentence. Primary, primary, or primary, primary, primary. So yeah, um, prime primary sounds more American than British. So I so I should have said uh, primary. Or primary instead of primary or primary. So yeah, um, <clears throat> anyway, let's wrap this up. Yeah. Objections prepare to respond. As discussed later. As discussed later. Objections typically fall in one of these categories. Number one, no need. Number two, no money. Number three, no time. Number four, no trust. Number five, no authority. Um, can't agree more with, with, with these. <laughs> to respond to objections, you need two tools. Number one, a probing question designed to expose the exact nature of the problem slash concern. And number two, a standard compelling response that addresses the problem slash concern. Draft and practice these scripted responses before you begin calling. Yeah, that, here, here comes the, <coughs> the you know, here comes one of the core um, concepts <coughs> slash practices of the whole book. So let's, uh, let's g g give it um, more, more love and re um, re respect. <laughs> Um, quote, when, um, quote, when I prepare for a sales presentation, I try to think like my client and like my competitor. I try to pinpoint every objection that either of them, that either of them could m make to my presentation. I write these objections down and then I figure out a way to respond to each one in three lines or less. End quote. 
by Mark Jarvis. Okay. Um, yeah. So yeah, I s suppose I have to I have to conclude this f f filming session since I'm my. <laughs> You know, since you know my memory card has pretty much run out of space, so yeah, and uh, and so does my you know my laptop computer and blah blah blah. You know, so that that means I just have to work between the angles to find more ways to to find more s subtle and <laughs> more subtle and uh, more effective, more um, slash more profitable ways to simp after my my dear audiences slash viewers slash patrons and that that means you guys <laughs> are out there but nevertheless uh, thank you very much for watching and listening to this video and being with me to the end of it so yeah i shall continue to push forward with my shitty life if god's still willing so yeah thank you very much again for your for your kind um, viewership and uh, generous patronage to my re to my three remaining patrons. Um, you know, the, the, the Delta Dan, John Smith, and uh, David. Um, you know, <laughs> so thank you very much. So yeah, uh, thank you very much for your time. Amen. Um, if God's still willing, hope to see you guys next time in my next videos on YouTube, on BizShoot, Rumble.com, etc. So yeah, take care, stay safe, God bless, cheers, au revoir, bye, amen.